from foreclosure to financial freedom. Let's get it on. Hello and welcome to the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer with Sales Whisperer, your host. This is your home on the web for no hype, no BS, straight talk on how to make more money growing your own business, how to make money in sales. When I got out of the Air Force in 1997, I jumped into commission sales. I had a wife, a baby, another one on the way, and I had to succeed. What you get here is free advice and insight from myself and from the guests that I bring on to help you do just that. Sell more, faster, at higher margin with less stress and more fun. Along those lines, if you would like another free tool to grow your sales, head on over to thesalesagenda.com and get the exact agenda I have used since 2006 to literally close millions of dollars in business. That includes a seven-figure deal with Google, $635,000 consulting and training gig with Dell, uh, hundreds and hundreds of Infusionsoft applications, as well as private consulting, copywriting, you name it. So again, it is thesalesagenda.com. It's a free resource. So head on over there now, and then when you come back, You'll enjoy this podcast with Mr. Ray Higdon. Ray Higdon all the way from Swiffle, right? That's Southwest Florida. Did I get that right? You got it, man. All right, man. <laughs> so uh, from foreclosure to freedom, welcome to the sales podcast. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on here. Yeah, thanks for coming on. I uh, You were recommended by someone, I don't even remember, on Twitter. Uh, I asked people, you know, who, who should I put in the hot seat? And, uh, and your name came up and... Uh, did a little research. Uh, I like your story and your background, everything you're doing. Uh, but for those that don't know you, would you mind uh, take a minute or two and give us a little thumbnail sketch and we'll dive down the rabbit hole? Sure, absolutely. Um, I had worked my way up corporate America um, just to kind of you know, realize that it wasn't what I wanted to do. I was um, you know, leaving the house when my kids were still asleep and coming home when they were back, uh, you know, back in bed and spending more time with pictures of them than the real thing. And so I had a few buddies of mine that were doing really well in real estate in Florida. And so I left corporate America back in 2005 and pursued my real estate empire, which uh, actually, you know, did really well until the market changed. And I got my butt kicked. I didn't know enough to know enough. And I uh, actually ended up in personal foreclosure in uh, 2008. And for about a year, I really struggled mentally, spiritually, of course, financially. Uh, bill collectors chasing me and me wondering what the hell was wrong with me. And, um, you know, I, I turned my life around starting in July of 2009 through uh, starting my own home-based business, um, you know, where we, um, you know, build, um, we have a coaching and training business now, we have uh, info products and, and things of that nature. And so we've since gone from, you know, in 2009, made $19,000, um, <laughs> pretty impressive, uh, to, uh, to nowadays where we now have a multi-million a year coaching and training business that we absolutely love. And, uh, and, and things are great. So now we get to train and coach people all over the world. And we have a lot of six and seven figure earners that, that are clients of ours. And, uh, we love to have fun. Very nice. Well, I was, um, you know, I was looking at, at your side and, and everything you're working on. And one of the things that I think would be most applicable to most of our listeners, uh, is how you've created so many products, mm-hmm. um, and, and there's two sides to every coin, right? I, I'm a big proponent of uh, 10% product and 90% promotion. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, sure. But uh, keep making more products, right? If one thing is selling, then, you know, make a second and a third, as long as the promotion's going. But, but can you talk to us about the promotion or the, the product creation side of things first, and we'll jump into the promotion side of things? Yeah, ab- absolutely. Great question. Um, yeah, we, we have. We have created, uh, I think, I mean, I don't even think we have all of our products on the actual site. I think we've, I, th- I think I've created in the last, let's see, what year is this? Uh, f- well, let's see, when did I first start? Uh, five years. In the last five years, I've probably created like 40 products. And some of those are, you know, events that are, that we just recorded, right? So I, I, I don't know that I would call them necessarily products, but we have created a lot of different products. And, you know, in the, in the beginning, uh, as we started to build our, our information marketing company and our coaching and training business, I did what I knew what I, you know, what to do. 
in that I am a content creation just freak of nature. Um, you know, I've blogged five to seven times a week, every week for six years. I do a podcast almost every day, a Periscope almost every day. Um, you know, we've now done, I think we're up to around 1700 blog posts that we've done since 2009. And so I, I create a lot of content and I do a lot of webinars. So some of the little mini products are actually just an extended webinar where I did like a three hour webinar on cold marketing or, you know, sales or closing or, you know, mindset, et cetera. And then there are other products that are quite extensive. Our uh, three minute expert is something that I think, I think there's a total of like 38 videos, um, you know, all modularized and everything. And, you know, that was a product that we, you know, we did uh, 930,000 in sales in a 10 day product launch. And, um, you know, we kicked some major butts. So some of those products are way more extensive than others. But I will tell you my, my experience. And now that we've kind of grown up a little bit is we don't launch as many products as we used to. Now that we have funnels that work and, you know, we have, um, you know, sales, we, we, we average um, 40, between 40 to 70 transactions every single day on our blog, ranging from $7 to $9.97. And, you know, now that we have that kind of steady eddy uh, transactions going through, it used to be the only transaction I had was when I did launch a product. <laughs> and so, right. you know, I kind of got addicted to that as, ooh, I better launch another one. And, you know, now that we have automatic sales coming in through different funnels, it's not as important to me to launch products, but to more launch, um, you know, serious grand slam home runs rather than smaller right. products. Okay. Well, I know that people that are listening to this, they are going to check out and I want to pull them back in because when you say you are a content creation freak of nature, yep. people are going to say, well, that is not me. Sure. Um, never mind. Let me turn this off and go <laughs> watch videos of cats, uh, on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, so what would you say to someone that is not a content creation freak of nature? How can they launch their first product? And again, I, and it's two other things that are going to make people check out. And I want them to tune in, all right? Cause you didn't start this way. You did $19,000 six years ago. Um, yep. you know, a $930,000 launch is daunting to a lot of people. They'll think I'm never going to get there. Sure. Uh, and having that many transactions. So, uh, but you got to start, I just saw something on your Instagram. Oh, I'm drawing a blank now. Wait, I think it was like, you just put it up, uh, start talking and I'm going to, I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to find that because <laughs> it's applicable. So wh where would somebody start? Uh, if they don't have their first product, how can they launch a product, let's say, in the next 30 or 60 days, even if they have a corporate America job? Sure, absolutely. You know, it, it's um, – I, you know, so I'm a guy that I failed English for in high school. I took five years to finish high school. I never finished college. You know, so I, I was never – I'm not the greatest writer, and my first videos – really sucked. They had bad lighting, they had bad audio, but I got started. What made sense to me was that to build an audience. That's that always made sense to me. And so in 2000 and you know late 2009, I started doing these little 3 to 4 minute videos sharing what I learned. And you know, and actually that process I call ILT, invest learn teach. And that's the reason that I've been featured twice now on the Entrepreneur on Fire um, you know, John Lee Dumas's show, and he just loves that concept. And he's all, he's constantly, you know, talking about it, invest time and possibly money to learn something. And then you teach it. And, you know, this is something that every entrepreneur that I know, they invest time and money to learn things. They just don't teach it. That's the difference. All I, I did. I think a lot of them don't even learn it. I think there's a lot of people that are professional visitors and professional conference attendees. That's a good point. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good point that they don't even learn it. Yeah, back to you. I'm sorry. No, that's all. I was just I oh. gotta throw a, throw a little you know blurb in there every now and then so people know I'm listening. <laughs> sure, <laughs> but um, but yeah, you know, I see people go to conferences, they make all these notes, and then they come home and they throw them on the pile of you know last week's notes or last month's notes or last quarter's notes, and they never do anything with them. They never even go back and revisit them. What I do while things are fresh in my head is I, I literally go through my notes and share you know on a video. I'll say, hey, I just went to this event. These are some of the things that I learned. They may help you. And that's how I started okay. my business, and that's how we built an audience. Let's highlight that real quick because 
Uh, I think people hold back because they're like, oh, well, I'm not an expert or, sure. you know, I'm pretty good, but, you know, such and such is even better. Who am I? Uh, totally. And so maybe they're afraid of people thinking they're a poser or whatever. But if you're just honest, right? Hey, everybody, I just came back from this conference. I was there for totally. a day. I was there for three days. I was in the midst of some real gurus. Here are the notes that I took. So, so you're not putting yourself out there saying, I invented this concept. You're just saying, here's what I learned, right? And, and that's a I'm, big difference to helping you put yourself out there. I, absolutely. And, you know, I don't, I don't start every video with, hi, I'm Ray Higdon, best-selling author. I mean, no one cares. They care about what things are going to, to apply their life. And so you sharing your notes just in that, even if it's raw, even if it's you reading your notes, and I do that all the time. I'm like, hey, here's my notepad. Here's my different notes. People love that stuff and they learn. And, you know, you, you have to understand that, you know, people don't care as much about your resume as they care how much value you add to their life. I mean, when I first started doing this, I was in foreclosure. Now, I didn't say, hey, guys, I'm in foreclosure. Here are my notes. You know, I didn't do that because that doesn't make any sense. But I also didn't profess to be something that I wasn't. And you don't need to when you focus on value. It's when you don't focus on value that things get a little tricky. Like, I don't know how to run a reality show and keep it entertaining. But I do know how to teach and share things that I learn. Right. That's very cool. So you mentioned uh, Periscope almost daily. I I'm starting to dabble in it. Uh, and I don't know. Uh, I, I like ad hoc stuff. I, I can, I can shoot from the hip, you know, and ad lib. Um, but I mean, what's, what's your secret there? I mean, cause you, is it enough just to be visible? I mean, it seems like you gotta, you gotta say something worthwhile, right? And, and, but there's still some little tips and tricks, you know, to leverage, have some type of call to action, right? And what do you do with sure. the video afterwards? I mean, how are you able to be productive and efficient um, and, and consistent with something yeah. like Periscope? You know, you, you got to build it into your daily life. If, you know, that's for me personally. What I like about Periscope is that there's, oh, I don't know, 12, 13 million people that now have downloaded it and 2% that actually broadcast from it. So you have a hungry audience that are looking for people that are broadcasting stuff. And I have clients that, you know, are, are new to, to working with us that if I told them, hey, go get 100 people on a webinar, they have no shot. They have no chance of getting 100 people on a webinar, yet right. they're getting 100 people on Periscope. Right. Okay? And if you use a call to action, what's what's the deal here? You know what I mean? I mean, you're getting an audience, give them a call to action and, and send them out there. So with Periscope, 99% of my Periscopes are done, and, and just hold until you judge me here, but they're done while I'm driving. Now, here's the safety tip, because you're always going to get the people, oh my God, he's Periscoping while driving, and gives crazy. I never, when I start it, I give my safety, like, you know, like you're on an airplane, my safety rules and regulations. And I say, hey, guys, while I'm driving, I'm looking at the road. I'm not looking at the screen. So if you're able to speak while driving, like if you have a passenger and they ask you a question, you have the ability to answer them, then you're able to do what I'm doing. I'm yeah. not looking at the screen. So I do it while I'm doing other things. So I literally, when I step into my car, a trigger fires off that says, hey, should I do a Periscope? And a lot of times I do. And I'll do it at least, usually once a day. Uh, funnily enough, when I travel, I kind of forget about it and I don't, and I don't right. do it. But I always have a call to action. I'm typically 99% of the time doing it while I'm driving to like the grocery store or driving to a meeting or something like that. So it's not really interrupting my day. And I always have... Uh, that, that call to action to push them off somewhere because Periscope re replaces nothing, absolutely replaces nothing. I do suggest using catch.me, that's K-A-T-C-H dot M-E, because it does grab all of your recordings and you can embed them later, you can download them, you can link to them. That's, you know, and, and I don't link to every Periscope I ever do, but sometimes hey, uh, something fires off and you have a really good one that people are like, holy crap, that was amazing. Well, wouldn't you like to link to that or embed it or something? And so you can with catch.me. It's a free service, downloads and, and you know, kind of archives all of your recordings there. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought it saved your video anyway on your phone. So couldn't you upload that to YouTube or whatever else? You could. Um, it's an additional step, and you and you know you you certainly could. Um, the catch me has it puts a little shell around the sideways 
video. Right. So I, to me, it looks a little bit better that way than me uploading this, the sideways video to, to YouTube. Right. But you can. You can you can do either one. The oh. benefit of doing it, of editing it and uploading it yourself is you could take out some of the beginning, you know, like communication, like, hey, what's up, Alaska or whatever else. Right. You could take some of that out and have it more compact right. um, or just link automatically to the, the Catch Me. So are you scheduling these ahead of time or you just get in your car? Okay, today I'm going to talk about yep. <laughs> podcasting. Yeah, so I'll do I've done it one of two ways. Um, for example, you know, we have a podcast. It's now been downloaded uh, over 1.5 million times. And I have never, actually, I can't say that. My first three were original content that I came up with myself. The remaining uh, I don't know, 500 have all been driven from my audience where my audience asks me a question. Uh, my support staff puts it into a little spreadsheet and I actually answer a question on my podcast on Periscope. I do one of two things. Either I've had a conversation that kind of, I thought stood out and I'm going to talk about, Hey, I just had a conversation with someone about closing or sales or, you know, whatever else. Or while I'm parked in the car, I'll say, Hey guys, hit me with a topic. And, you know, I'll get a bunch of topics and some of them I don't really want to talk about. And then I'll see one. I'm like, all right, cool. Then I'll put it into reverse and then I'll start driving based on that one topic. So a lot of times I have my audience kind of pick it. And uh, so that that's kind of fun. And that does take the pressure off. And I never uh, email about, hey, guys, I'm going to do Periscope. I never announce it, yet we'll have... Uh, average between 270 to 360 people that would jump on live. That's not replays. That's live as I do these completely unannounced. And, you know, that's pretty cool. Now, I've obviously been building, you know, an audience for quite a while. So that's not fair for the brand new person to, you know, to think about. But you got to start somewhere. And I and I did, too. So, all right, that's very cool. And are they are they short, uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes? Are they longer? Um, the every, I, I would say I probably have maybe three that have gone over 20 minutes. Most of them are pretty short. Most of them are, I'm, I'm hitting a topic, I'm doing it quick. And then I'm pulling up to my meeting and I'm saying, all right, guys, I got to go. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I keep them, I keep them pretty tight usually. I mean, they're usually over five minutes and right, right around the, the 15 minute mark would be my guess. Okay. Uh, I saw a thing, Larry, the cable guy, he said, uh, he said, my wife is so beautiful. We once made love for an hour and four minutes. And they're like an hour and four minutes. He says, yeah, it was, uh, daylight savings time. We changed over, you know, nice, <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> thinking about four to five minutes. Oh, if I can do that, I can do that. <laughs> um, so what's the call to action? And uh, are you preparing that ahead of time? I mean, you got to think that through, right? And have some type of landing page or URL of some sort to ask people to do something, right? Sure. You know, if, and I, and I tell, you know, we tell our clients that if they're brand new and they don't have capture pages, they don't have, you know, awesome giveaways or anything like that. I mean, heck at minimum, you could tell them to reach out to you on Twitter. You could tell them to email you, but, but always have an actual call to action. So, you know, if you just don't, you could always say, Hey guys, if you got value out of this, feel free to reach out to me at, you know, blah, blah, blah.com, you know, and give your actual email address. I will typically have, because we've been doing this for a little bit and we have different capture pages and things and giveaways, I will typically have a call to action that's congruent with the topic at hand. So if I, if I'm speaking on, on, you know, uh, social media marketing or something like that, I may throw out my uh, wife's training. You know, she has a training on how to, you know, do, get more sales on social media. And I may throw out her link that I have, you know, kind of memorized. If I'm talking about blogging or content creation, I'll throw out a training that I have that registers for a, web, for a webinar and then has a call to action at the end to, to purchase one of our products. So it, it depends. It depends on the topic. But I, 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 as soon as I know the topic, I do kind of you know, I think in my head, okay, what would be a good call to action to send them to? And if I just can't think of anything, then I say, Hey guys, if you like this training, go to rayhigdon.com. I got six years of training on there for absolutely free. Check it out. You know, so it's even, you know, that's a more milder call to action, but usually it's congruent with the topic. Right. Uh, have you been able to track this? I mean, if you have 230 on or are you tracking like through analytics or opt-ins? Or are you seeing a bump uh, in sales or uh, engagement on other platforms? You know, I this is kind of you know similar to my podcast. I I um, 
I don't have an addiction to what are the, what are the exact results from this activity because it's not a big deal to me. My podcast and my Periscope add about 20 to 25 minutes a day to, to my entire day. Um, if I wanted to, and, you know, for those that are more, you know, I want to track everything, you know, et cetera, which is a good thing, not a bad thing. I'm, I'm the bad thing. I'm the bad thing because I don't track everything. The only thing we track ruthlessly is any kind of advertising we actually do. We track that ruthlessly. We do split tests. We do all that, all that jazz. Um, when it comes to, to Periscope, I'm throwing out a link. You could always create a pretty link and just see how many people take action from that. Um, I, I would suspect that it's not a, a, a big impact on my business monetarily um, over the course of people getting, you know, me building rapport with them and them, you know, building trust with me. I, I, I do suspect over a period of time it makes a difference. I don't suspect in the short term it's, it's a huge hill of a difference and just, just my gut. But like you said, I, I don't know because I'm not, I'm not really crazy about, um, you know, testing those, th- those things. But you could – Again, put a um, you know put a unique link that you do a call to action to and track it, but I haven't. Yeah, well, and you're in a position um, where you know, you're using Periscope, you're using this medium to help you be everywhere mm-hmm. uh, and expand your reach. Uh, whereas others, you know, if they're brand new and listening to this, you know, I'd say try Periscope anyway, if nothing else, uh, to get comfortable. Mm-hmm. speaking to get comfortable with, uh, what do they call it? Uh, it's not contemporary speak. What, what's the word? Like, uh, Oh, I'm drawing a blank. I know what word you're thinking of, and I can't think of it either. Yeah. Like <laughs> it, it's, it's extemporaneous. Maybe I think that's, yeah, the word. I think that's it. <laughs> like just kind of doing it. If you've ever been part of Toastmasters, you know, somebody will pull out a topic and blah, 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 give it to you and you have to speak. Uh, so right. thinking on your feet, um, you know, telling a story, having a, a beginning, middle and an end, uh, if nothing else, right? Cause, cause Periscope only lasts 24 hours, right? Unless you use catch or something like that to, that to reuse correct. it. So it's and and in the beginning, you may only have five people on it. So That's don't right. worry about it. Oh, I found your Instagram. That's what reminded me. Uh, and that was just from yesterday. Sometimes the smallest step in the right direction ends up being the biggest step of your life. Tiptoe if you must, but take the step. Yeah. Right. So, uh, very apropos for right now. Uh, cause I just see so many people, they fail because they fail to start. Absolutely. Uh, and you know, if nothing else, you know, just get started. Uh, and, and this is a free tool, right? It's good grief. Uh, just get started. Um, so, all right. Let's talk about your podcasting as well, because I mean, that's a ton of downloads. I don't have that many downloads. Uh, how are you doing that? How, how are you driving um, so much interaction? Because this is a relatively short time. I mean, again, six years ago, you made $19,000. Uh, yeah. Now you got, what, 1.5 million or 1.3 million downloads? Uh, I just logged in to give you an accurate one. It's a 1.454. Um, so yeah, 1.4, almost 1.5 million downloads of my podcast. We, we actually, we started that. Um, I attended, uh, I was a keynote speaker at an internet marketing event. I met John Lee Dumas. I had never even heard of him and I bought his course. That was, that was last, that was last April. So April of last year is when I started podcasting. However, uh, I had already built an audience. You know, I had already built a name for you know for a few years. So it's it's not it's it's not like hey I was just brand new and all of a sudden I you know so right. it, you know I always give that that you know that that heads up is someone with an audience can build any anything can get lots of downloads of anything, um, you know, with whatever they do, even if they're, if they're new to it. Um, so, so yeah, I don't, I didn't want it to replace my blog audience. So I don't promote it nearly as much as I do my blog because I am able to track my blog a lot tighter and make little tweaks and, you know, and I get, you know, the person's information, you know, et cetera. Um, but you know, we do them, the audience likes them and, and I get a lot of compliments on them and, you know, we obviously, you know, as long as we're still getting downloads, oh, well, keep doing them. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome. And that's an important thing. You know, I, I had uh, Jay bear on a couple of years ago and, you know, he said, if you're not good at email marketing, you have no business being on social media. 
Mm. Uh, and and you nice. kind of made that point. You know, your blog is where people opt in. That's where you do your lead capture because that's where you truly own your list, right? Because yes. Periscope, Meerkat, Twitter, Instagram, they could all fire you today. Right? Yep. I mean, we have no control over uh, when these guys are going to change the rules or go out of business or get bought or whatever. Uh, but we own our websites, right? And we own our list. Um, so, Absolutely. So it sounds like you, you're following that philosophy, right? Totally. You know, my, my blog is my hub and all social media, all other things that are outside my control are my spokes. So we have, I mean, we have a crazy audience on, on Facebook and very, you know, um, engage, very awesome, but Facebook is, is, it's just a spoke. It's a spoke for me to get them from Facebook that I can't control that I can't, you know, you know, know what, Ooh, this let's tweak this little image here. Let's change this button to download instead of enter, you know, whatever. And, um, you know, so I use all of this stuff, podcast, Periscope, Facebook, all social media as spokes to drive them to my hub, which is my my email list, which is mainly being entered in through my uh, through my blog. Right. And then how are you taking orders? What kind of shopping cart are you using? Because I know that's an obstacle for a lot of people. They're like, sure. okay, I made this. Uh, I don't have a shopping cart. I don't have a merchant account. You know, how, how can I take money online? Yeah, I mean, in the beginning, I did, I you know, did what most people probably do, and that's I use PayPal. Um, and you know, I've heard, I've heard total horror stories about PayPal, and you know, I, I, I never had any issues with them, but I also never ran a lot of money through them. Um, I mean, I think once we were at uh, five or ten thousand, somewhere between five and ten thousand a month, we uh, we bought Infusionsoft. Um, we use, um, you know, uh, authorized, we use first data. So you use kind of the, you know, the standard stuff. Um, and that's something that I do see a lot of people, in my opinion, they jump into maybe too soon. Um, keep your expenses low until the profits are there. And I see, you know, I mean, we now pay, you know, for, for our list size, we pay a thousand bucks a month for Infusionsoft. I do not suggest that to, you know, people new to info marketing and, and creating you know, products and things like that, because you don't, you don't need that. You don't need to be in the hole from the very get go. Uh, I mean, we had, when we first started creating products, I mean, you know, we would send them a direct link with no login. We used PayPal. We did, you know, everything wrong, but it still worked. Right. And eventually we were making enough money to reinvest in the business and start to get some of these nicer things. But there's always additional expenses. I mean, right. getting Infusionsoft is not a thousand bucks a month. It's like a bajillion dollars a month because you have programmers, you have updates, you have things that break, you have, I mean, there's, it's, that's not just the only cost. There's a lot of cost to running a bigger system and just make sure that the, you know, your revenue uh, mandates that. Yeah, I love it. Keep your expenses low. And that's been the story, you know, of most of the people I've had on the show. I mean, they they left corporate America or what have you. You know, their their road to revenue uh, was keeping expenses low. And uh, mm -hmm. it's my own story as well, you know. So, I mean, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I mean, when you got started, though, so you, you were in real estate. Things start collapsing around you. Um, how... How did you know what to do next? How did you know where to start? Like that Instagram picture here, right? I mean, how, what was your tiptoe? Yeah, you know, it was a good question. I mean, the 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 first thing for me, and it's you know, we I, I, I tell this to people all the time. The first thing for me was a mindset shift. Um, you know, I went from thinking something was wrong with me. I went from you know, wondering what happened to me. I used to be this and now I'm this because we had success in real estate until we didn't. And, you know, it's and the only thing worse than not making money is having made a lot of money and then not making money. That's way worse. You know, if you're used to ramen right. noodles all the time, then it's not that big a deal, you know, but if you're used to filet, then ramen, eh, it kind of sucks. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so, so my, my first um, thing was actually, um, and I didn't plan this, this wasn't a plan, but it is the story is I cleaned up some of my past, you know, I'd had a, a rocky relationship with my dad and I actually hadn't seen him in 13 years. He had never met my two sons and they were eight and nine years old. And, you know, I, I went to this seminar and it, it just kind of 
opened me up to maybe I got some crap in my in my past that needs to be cleared up. And maybe that was part of the reason I was struggling so much. And, you know, I went up to Indiana where, where he lives and, you know, introduced him to my kids and, you know, reestablish a relationship. Still not perfect, but at least to reestablish a relationship. And, uh, you know, about a week, 10 days later after that, I got, you know, a, a friend of mine uh, invited me over to, uh, to a meeting. Uh, it was an opportunity to start selling this new thing. And, you know, I said, screw it. I'm a, I got nothing else going on. And the question is, would that have happened? Would I have been as open to it had I not repaired some of my past? And I, I, I wouldn't have. I mean, there's just no way. And, and so it, it just, I'm very blessed to have had that happen, to have that mindset shift. And then from there, I just got into massive action. Um, you know, I read, so I was, you know, I was selling this, this home business opportunity and I read this book called go for no. And they're friends of mine. I'd highly suggest them being on your show. If you she, haven't had them, she was already on my show. Oh, awesome. Andrea's amazing. <laughs> yeah. She's incredible. And so I read this book and I'm like, screw it. I'm going to go for 20 no's a day. And so I went for 20 no's a day and, you know, just connecting with people on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, everywhere, you know, warm market. I mean, I was calling everyone I possibly could and uh, gathering 20 no's a day. And I didn't, I wasn't doing it perfectly. I didn't have perfect marketing. My video sucked, but I kept making them anyway. And, you know, it, it just started working. And about five months into that, which, I know for some people probably sounds like a lifetime. I mean, think about it. Five months, 20 no's a day. That's a lifetime to most people. But to me, I just didn't care. I had already talked to my girlfriend, who fortunately is my wife now. Um, but uh, my girlfriend at the time, I said, listen, the next two years are going to be sheer hell because I got to get out of foreclosure. I'm sick of being here. And, you know, and I didn't know how quickly I'd be able to turn things around because five months in, I was at 10000 a month. Seven months in, 40000 a month. Mm -hmm. Ten months in, 50000 a month. And it's, and that was, you know, early 2010 and it hasn't gone down. Right. And so, you know, we've been, you know, it, it, it took massive imperfect action. You know, I wasn't doing everything right. I maybe stepped on a few toes here and there, but I, I, you know, I, I had to get it done and it wasn't me studying to get everything perfectly. It actually wasn't until probably two uh, probably close to 2011 when we really got serious about investing in our education and really, you know, I mean, we've spent, you know, $249,000 in the last two years in coaches and masterminds. And, you know, so now we, we invest crazily into education. Uh, in the beginning, I didn't have the money to do that. So, you know, just get into imperfect action would be my suggestion. And then from there, you can make tweaks. You're going to learn better ways to do it. And then there will be time for investing in yourself and getting better and sharpening the, the ax. Um, we've done that all along, but we really do it heavily now because one little sharpen can make a six-figure difference now. Right. And that's a, that's a big deal now. Yeah, that's awesome. So a couple things there. Uh, so it's um, Andrea Waltz, right, and her husband. So yeah. They were on, uh, if you go to the com slash session 78, Whoa, uh, you can nice. hear that interview. The other thing I want people to take away from this, because uh, I know network marketing and home-based business gets uh, a bum rap, and whether you all like it or not, the key takeaway, I think, here is that because you decluttered, right, decluttered your brain, your life, mm -hmm. Uh, in squaring things up with your dad, you were open, you know, you were receptive to new possibilities. And it just so happened it was network marketing that came your way. Yep. But for anybody else, maybe it's a recruiter that calls you into another job. Sure. Maybe it's a buddy that, that, that wants you to, to, you know, launch a, a new venture. Maybe it's just your own brain kicks in and you see an opportunity, something you've always known about, a product launch, something you can invent, whatever. And you finally have the freedom uh, to see that opportunity and jump in. Okay. So if you're listening to this, you go, oh, no way. Network marketing. Blah, blah. You're, you're listening to this the wrong way. There's probably some baggage, some junk you need to clean up in your own head, uh, to see the opportunity that, that Ray's presenting in this. Um, so I'm glad you brought that up and told that story because it's, it's so important. Uh, there is so much, um, baggage and head trash. I mean, most of our own self talk is negative. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I mean, if, if left to our own devices, we absolutely, we come to the negative. And I mean, I, I created a, just a, like a psychological trigger that if, you know, during those days, if I thought about how life used to be great, or if I thought about how life sucked, 
I had to pick up the phone and I would pick up that damn phone and I would just scroll. It'd be a, and I would, whatever my finger landed on is who I would call. And I didn't care if it was my dry cleaner. I didn't care if it was an ex-girlfriend. I didn't care who it was. And, you know, so it was a little, you know, maybe crazy, but, um, you know, but I just had, I had to get out of my head cause I had lived in my head for a year and, right. and a lot of people, a lot of people do. Yep. Uh, you know, and, and that's something I'm glad you brought up because I, you know, Zig Ziglar uh, is an idol of mine. I mean, a mentor, you know, virtually. Uh, and he he always talked about, you know, be what I think it was like be, have, do or something like that mm-hmm. or do, be, have. But I, I, I think it really is it, you have to do it first and then you become it mm-hmm. and then you have it. Uh, and I think his is the other way around, you know, become, do, have, something like that. Mm-hmm. But I, I really believe it's it's the emo, it, it's the, the action, picking up that phone, right? You're overcoming the fear. And by acting like a professional salesperson, a professional entrepreneur, which means you're doing what has to be done. And in your case, you were making cold calls, right? You were, it's all you had at hand. And so, you know, you dance with who brung you, right? Yep. And so in the doing you became that Absolutely. professional entrepreneur and in becoming that professional entrepreneur, it now has enabled you to have what you want. Right. A- Absolutely. Well said. Yep. Uh, very nice. Uh, well, man, this has been fantastic. I've got links uh, to all your stuff here in, in the show notes. Uh, they can find you at Ray Higdon dot or twitter.com slash Ray Higdon. Right. That is correct. Uh, and then RayHigdon.com. And from there, I'll link to everywhere else. Your your uh, Instagram, uh, several of your books I see on Amazon, Maintaining Your Power is one of them. Uh, your podcast uh, looks very cool. Well, what are some, some parting words of wisdom you would you want our listeners to take away from with this? Yeah, you know, I, you, you brought up, uh, you know, network marketing, and, and I agree. You know, if you if you're somebody that gets into that space, you know, you're kind of taking it, you're, you're, you're taking a social challenge head on. And, and I knew entering that space it was, but for me, dead broke in foreclosure, no credit. It was, you know, hardly any risk and hardly any overhead. So it was a great place for me to start. And then we built our, our coaching and training business and product business and, and everything like that. Just know that it's, it's all the same. If you can, if you can build an audience, that is so, so critical, build an audience. And when you do that, you become a type of authority in your niche. And that, that is the really important stuff. And so now, you know, we get to coach people that are, you know, six and seven figure earners all, all over the world in, in network marketing. We do have some, you know, real estate clients. We have a snack company. We have, we have a few, you know, outside network marketing, but a lot of them inside network marketing. And, you know, we're, we're the guys that are always pre to raise the vibration of that profession because people aren't actually turned off by network market team. They're turned off by network market turs. And the only reason you're ever turned off is because they weren't trained properly. So we're one of the guys out there training these guys properly to help them be better and be actual professionals and, and just raise the conversation of the profession. Cause it is a great conversation. It, it is a great profession if you really understand it and get to know it. Yeah. Very cool. Mr. Ray Higdon. Thanks for coming yeah. on the show, man. Thanks for having me. Honored. All right. Have a great day. You too, my friend. How you like them apples, huh? A while ago, I wrote um, a weekly whisper and it talked about, you know, you cannot climb a smooth mountain. You need the jagged edges. You need the dips and the valleys so you can rest, so you can grab hold, right? Put your fingers in it, put your hands in it. Uh, so, Ray lived this, right? He he had a great life, successful, everything collapsed. uh, And being able to come back is really what defines a person. That's what is inspirational to me. You know, notice how he had failures early on, right? He he struggled with school. He struggled with English. Uh, His initial content that he wrote, he said, was, quote, sucks, right? Uh, Now he's a product creation Fool. He's creating 40 to 70 transactions per day through his blog. Uh, he's launching different programs. He's embracing technology, right? Things like Periscope. But remember, he has a call to action. Before he starts, like, uh, what was it, Seven Habits, uh, Stephen Covey, begin with the end in mind. 
He doesn't do Periscope just to do it. He has a call to action. He knows where he's going to lead people when he's done with it. So you have to, all of your content has to be that way. You know, he mentioned, I love the fact that his blog is the hub. Everything else are the spokes. And I've always taught that. I was at a client just a couple of weeks ago in Hollywood and drew that on the board and they were taking pictures of this thing. Um, so your website is really the only thing that you're going to own. Anything you do with Periscope, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, those are platforms that you don't own. They can change the rules at any time and cut you off. So make sure you own the blog. Make sure you're driving traffic back there uh, because that's what you own. You know, we talked about taking massive action. He talked about, you know, go for no. Uh, so I want you to go back and check out as well the saleswhisper.com slash 78 uh, where I interview the author of that book, Go For No. And what that means is, are you asking for people to keep buying from you? You know, it's kind of like when you go out to eat, hey, would you like an appetizer? Would you like a drink? You know, would you like to hear about the special? Would you like dessert? Would you like an after-dinner drink? Keep asking. You know, people may want it. You never know till you go for no. So a lot of great content, a lot of great tips here uh, for the show notes and for uh, links to everything. You can get it at thesaleswhisper.com slash session 153. That's where you can find everything on Mr. Ray Higdon from today. And uh, I'm sticking with this for a little while, but I want you to visit thesalespodcast.com forward slash magnetic. That is a program that I have had, like I said, on my bookshelf and Dan Kennedy, I have followed for years, but that program is the seminal product program. It's at the core of so many people's businesses. Check it out, order it, apply it. The sales forward slash magnetic. Do yourself a favor, get that, apply it, and then let me know how much money you are making. Thank you for listening, and as always, remember to sell different.